very much. All right. Our final speaker in this part of the um, of Switch is Will Atkinson talking about the carbon bathtub. Did I get that right? You got the right person. <laughs> the kitchen sink approach to climate change, but not how you might think. Where did I get the bathtub from? <laughs> okay, five second disclaimer, th these views are my own and you'll see why in a second. There is a carbon bathtub. Has anybody seen this special bathtub before? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, a few. This is like a classroom staple for explaining climate change. We emit CO2. It takes centuries to go out of the atmosphere, and the levels go up to warm our planet and this rubber duck. All are true. But here's a question for you. What fraction of current human-caused climate change does come from CO2? We have about 10 seconds now, so let's uh, raise hands if you think it's more than 80%. If you think it's 60 to 80 percent, okay, and if you think it's less than 60 percent, okay, I see some folks read my abstract. That's good. What if I told you it was 42, just like in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Uh, this is obviously very different in the long term. CO2 is crucial for the long term impacts, so I don't want you to get that idea. But in terms of current impacts from current warming, Nearly half of that actually comes from these other pollutants, like methane and other ozone precursors, black carbon, HFC refrigerants, a little bit from aviation contrails. So this bathtub is actually, wait for it, a double bowl kitchen sink with one bowl for CO2, one for other pollutants, and we must address both to prevent overflow. Let's go deeper with some amateur slide design. <laughs> First, we must cut CO2 as fast as possible. And again, that's because it lasts for centuries. So that whatever we don't cut now will be there for hundreds of years, many generations, we don't want that. So to do that, we have to drive down the fossil fuels that are driving current emissions and also preserve nature to reduce deforestation and sustain those critical land and ocean sinks, no pun intended. In terms of other pollutants, they're much more potent, but also much more short-lived. So if all of those pollutants were gone today, we would actually see almost half of that current warming gone within a day or a decade. Almost half gone within a decade is, is pretty important. Uh, and in terms of what we have to do, it's like CO2. We have everyone's great work to move away from fossil fuels via clean energy and efficiency, while we also need a yes and approach to turn down those faucets even faster. So what does that mean? First, for methane, it means uh, tracking and tackling super emitters in oil and gas, coal mines, landfills, ag, on the supply and the demand sides. This is more than half the battle when it comes to the short-lived climate pollutants. In terms of HFCs, we need to implement policies here and abroad to scale cleaner refrigerants across industry, appliances, even heat pumps. And that's even as cooling demand is set to rise in a warming world. For black carbon, it means cleaner cook stoves, trucks, and ships, especially in emerging economies and the Arctic. And that's because that soot can blacken the ice to cause further warming and melting feedbacks. We don't want those. In terms of other air pollutants, that lead to the ground level ozone that we Coloradans know all too well. The good news is that clean energy can lead the way towards avoiding those sources of haze that plague our summer times. And finally, for aviation contrails, these are lesser known, but they might even provide the same current warming as aviation CO2, according to some research. But uh, we can avoid more than 80% of the impact by reducing less than 20% of the flight paths and changing them just a little bit. Even if you're not in any of these sectors, the good news is that we need everyone's help, whether you work with cities or corporates, whether you work with numbers or NIMBYs. And honestly, we need all the help we can get.
because every little bit of warming raises the risk of climate tipping points like these. Now, these are not game over for us, but they do bring the risk of cascading and maybe some irreversible impacts. So that's plenty of motivation, especially as we see all of these new heat records month after month, and with the threat of potentially avoiding the air pollutants that cool the Earth, but not the climate pollutants that warm it. So that's the danger, but we can still cut warming fast, especially if we can combine all of that great decarbonization that everyone here is working on with these targeted actions across all pollutants. This is much more beneficial and has much fewer risks than geoengineering. And so yeah, this whole analogy, this whole kitchen sink thing is just a big message of opportunity, even if my targeted ads are a little kitchen theme these days. True story. So yeah, we need a kitchen sink approach to climate change, just in the way you think. Thank you. All right, Will, that was great. RMI also, where he works, Rocky Mountain Institute, um, is just doing amazing work all over the world. Um, it's really, it's, it's been a tremendous asset to the state of Colorado and, and really um, growing. I how many employees RMI have now? Almost 700. Almost it's grown a lot in the last two years and um, a lot of funding going there from private money trying to solve some of these big, big issues. So um, taking this back to us, so the people in the room who not are just um, interested personally to lower their carbon footprint, but are trying to help the industry move, what, what's our biggest bang for the buck when it comes to limiting the damaging effects of climate change, knowing that some of these are a week, some of them are a year, and some of them are hundreds of years, correct? So. Okay. Yeah, and is is methane easier to deal with on a basically per damage basis than carbon dioxide? Meaning, can we do it cheaper? It depends on the emissions. They're they're both cheaper in certain places and not others. But we need all. I just want an answer. <laughs> Jeez, you're making it sound difficult, so I'm just gonna have beer. Um, all right, well, that was fantastic. So a big round of applause for all your first rounders. All right, good. So we're gonna take about a 15 minute break and then we're gonna call you back and we're gonna have our last four. Don't leave, uh, the best is yet to come. Not really, so.